welcome to the uh, NPTEL online certification course on structural systems in architecture. This is the module 1 second lecture uh, on force system. So, uh, as we discussed in the first lecture the various principles and uh, things uh, of the structures and the structural systems, we will def, uh, going to uh, discuss the uh, this four concept on this particular second lecture. We will start with the mechanics we will then go into the force and the force systems uh, system of forces and then we will also discuss the forces and its impact. The learning objective of this particular uh, the second lecture will be we will try to understand the what is the mechanics and uh, what are what are its vipers that uh, how a particular uh, structural engineering relate with the mechanics. We also going to we will also going to discuss the, the, the concept of force or the uh, how a force can be conceptualized and the what are the different type of forces or so. Also we will identify some of the type of forces or uh, types of force and how does the impact on the particular force on any kind of the object. Now let us start with the mechanics, the mechanics is a, a science or a particularly field of engineering where it deals with the forces and in its effect on any object uh, and uh, uh, that object may be uh, in rest, the object may be in the motion. So, both can be taken care of uh, in, a, uh, in a nutshell. If you see the uh, uh, mechanics, it has a clear cut three uh, boundaries or the three types. One is called the engineering mechanics which talks about the rigid bodies. Uh, of course, in the, the in the nature you cannot uh, find even a single object which is a purely rigid. Mm. So, rigid bodies mechanics is called engineering mechanics where a force will be applied to a object, rigid object and it will impart some kind of a motion or maybe it will a, uh, in static or in motion, but there will be no uh, changes in the internal stress or the internal kind of a, a parameters or so. The second one is the, the, the solid mechanics which talks about the deformed bodies or the bodies which are elastic and mostly all the materials in whatever you will see is the elastic material more or less. So, uh, it will going to uh, if even if it is going for a motion or maybe it is in static it will have some kind of a deformation. And the third one is the, the fluid mechanics. So, it is uh, in the domain of fluid air and the water and other kind of fluids the when a force is applied to that uh, what happened to that particular fluid and how it will be compressed and what are the different parameter ch parametric changes that comes under the fluid mechanics. So, if now we go into the engineering mechanics which we will going to uh, as I told which will going to apply in a rigid body and uh, the external force on a rigid body and the what will be the effect of that particular rigid body depending upon the forces. In the engineering mechanics, it has further uh, classification or the divisions. The first one is called statics, which deals with the rigid body of course, but the rigid body is under rest, it is not under any kind of a motion. So, those are the typical uh, the formulas or the equations we use for the statics that the summation forces in x direction is equal to 0 uh, or maybe in the y direction is also equal to 0 such are the equations uh, very popular equations can be used for the statics. We will discuss these equations in the uh, next uh, lecture or so. There is an, the an, another part of the engineering mechanics or the another sub part is that is the, the dynamics. Dynamics deals with the motion of a body which is under a motion when it the mo, uh, study of motion and forces on a body which is in under kind of emotions. So, in the dynamics it has two further classification one is called kinematics. The kinematics is a, uh, a study on the dynamics or the bodies which are under the motion and it will study the forces and the displacement the geometry of the motions and uh, uh, those are the, the it will be going to study without uh, addressing any cause of the movement or so. So, the typical uh, equations like S equal to u t plus half f t square which is very 
popular equations uh, since your school days or so for a linear kind of uh, motion with a initial velocity, time and the acceleration is the uh, that, that comes under the kinematics. The second equation r equal to u square sin 2 theta by g is a uh, very popular equation for the uh, finding of the range of a parabolic uh, the um, kind of a uh, trajectory which is a parabol parabolic trajectory that, that those are the that equation. So, it is a, about the geometry of the motions or so. The second part of the dynamics is called kinetics. Kinetics is the study of the mass and the motion of the body. So, of course, the, in the particular motion a mass is also involved. The first equation if you see the m v equal to m 1 v 1 plus m 2 v 2 is the, uh, the conservation of the momentum. So, uh, that includes the mass also and also the motion or the velocities of the second equation half m v square equal to m g whole into h 1 minus h 2 it is the, uh, the energy uh, equations where a particularly uh, some uh, some object is falling from h 1 to h 2 say though uh, that potential energy is converted to the kinetic, uh, kinetic energy and the velocity. So, those are involving or the, the mass of the particular mass and also the motion. So, those are the kinetics. Kinematics you see there is no uh, mass involved in that. Then next is the solid mechanics which I have just now told where it will deal with the, the forces uh, this particular uh, science or the engineering with the deformed bodies under the action of the uh, uh, external force. Suppose, if you take a, a piece of uh, rubber, uh, rubber piece or maybe a spring, if you press it, it will be going to deform, it will be uh, shrink, it will be and if you uh, again pull it, it will be again going to be elas, I mean, uh, elas, I mean uh, elongate, elongate and the compressed or so. So, then so there are some kind of a stress will going to involve, there are some kind of a young modulus of the elasticity which are those small formulas are presented over here and finally, as I told there are another branches of the fluid mechanics. So, if you now see the mechanics has three typical per, uh, the classification engineering mechanics, solid mechanics and the fluid mechanics, engineering mechanics I have statics and dynamics and in the dynamics I have the kinematics and kinetics. So, uh, these are the, 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 the uh, typical parameters, these are deal with the statics, deal with the equilibrium, the free body and all those. The kinematics deals with the velocity, displacement and all those kind of thing, accelerations and all. The, the kinetics deals with the energy, momentum and all those. Solid mechanics deal with the stress, uh, strain, deflection, bending which is actually the, the some of the parameters for the deformed bodies or uh, those kind of thing. Now, in our uh, structural engineering, I have to take this two path. I mean, uh, I do not have to uh, deal with the dynamics as present. Uh, dynamics is also applicable in the structures. So, those are not in our scope of this particular NPTEL course or this lecture course. So, we will uh, first definitely want to see some of the statics and which I will understand that we will have to understand some kind of the, the free body diagrams, then the equilibrium conditions, uh, the resultant forces, how it, it can be evaluated or so, then the, the reaction forces uh, based on the any kind of a beam system, then there are force, couple, moments and all those kind of thing, which are a basically a part of the statics. The, dynam uh, the, the uh, dynamics will definitely go into in that and we will definitely after that we switch over to the solid mechanical systems or the uh, solid mechanics which we will discuss with stress, strain, deflection, deformation, buckling, uh, torsion and all those. And those comes into the, the typical domain of the structural engineering. <coughs> the next let us discuss what is force. We all know the force is a uh, part and parcel of any kind of the, the engineering. It may be a civil engineer deals with force in a different form. A mechanical engineer is also uh, deal with a fo force in, in different way uh, for their machine designs or so. We design, we uh, deal the force in a way that we can design as a building or any kind of a structure. So, force is defined as uh, its action that tends to change the, the state of inertia. 
So, some something is in uh, rest. So, I want to change the state of inertia from the rest to the some motion. That motion may be a linear motion, that motion may be a circular motion, whatever is may be, whatever it may be. So, it is try to change the, the inertia. The action that change the shape of the elastic body also. Sometimes it may not come under motion, it may remain as a as a as a static or the as a non-movable object, but it will change the volume, change the, the length, it increases or maybe it is decreased due to the, the application of the force. So, force is that. Now, what are the characteristics of the force? So, force has mainly uh, the four such characteristics. As you know force, be, I mean I have not written that one, but as you know the force is a vector. So, it has a magnitude and it is having a direction. So, uh, if I say this is a force of x and if this is the positive x, so this will be the negative side of the force, it may be a negative x also. So, the this magnitude is there, the direction is there. The magnitude of the force is measured in the, the Newton, uh, in the unit is Newton in SI unit. Uh, 1 Newton as you know it is a 1 kg uh, mass which is uh, under a uh, acceleration of uh, 1 meter per second square or so. Then it has a point of application. So, let me discuss with this particular figure. So, uh, as you know this is a particular, suppose it is a rod, suppose this is a uh, kind of a sorry, uh, kind of uh, a rod, this is a kind of a piece of a rod, metal rod or whatever and I am applying uh, a particular force of 20 kilo Newton or maybe uh, some uh, kind of a. So, that is the magnitude, that is the magnitude of the force. So, this is the, 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 the magnitude. The direction of the force is this one, this 30 degree with horizontal axis or so. So, it has various type of direction. So, this is the direction. So, this is the, the direction of the force. And then the, the point of application where it is applied. So, when it is a point of application, so this is the uh, particular body. So, I am applied at this particular point A. So, this is the point of application is suppose A. And then the, the line of action, the line of action of the force is C, this is the force is on the, this particular axis, central axis. This is the line of longitudinal axis is the line of action. So, this is the, the fourth one. So, those are the four typical things that we have to uh, understand when I go for a kind of the uh, device some kind of a force systems or so. So, as I told see it is a 20 kilo Newton is the, the magnitude, 30 degree with the horizontal axis is the, uh, the, the direction, point A is the application point and longitudinal axis of the body is the direction or the line of action or so. Now, the system of force when uh, that is the, the what I have discussed is now is a, a single force. Now, when a uh, body is under uh, not a single maybe a more than one forces group of uh, or maybe a group of bodies under the forces. So, it is called a system of forces or force system. It is also classified uh, two uh, uh, in a two broad types. One is called coplanar forces when the action of the all the forces in the same plane, suppose I have five finger, all are in the same plane. So, if I put the forces, uh, so those five forces from the five finger uh, act in the same plane or so. But sometimes uh, it can be non coplanar forces also. So, system of force, more than one force, same uh, uh, finger, five finger, but uh, instead of putting like this, I have put it like this. So, there are five forces in five different planes. So, they are non coplanar forces or so. So, this is a two bro very broad uh, uh, classification. So, I have some uh, figure. So, this is a crane which is kind of a pulling some kind of a load. So, you see all the, uh, the cable or the boom or maybe any kind of the, uh, the loading devices and all the, the arms or so, everything is under a coplanar forces. Whereas, if you take a table in a particular table, you see there are four legs and after uh, this four legs are providing some kind of a reaction and those four reactions are non-coplanar -co forces because those four are not at all acting in a same plane, it is not acting in the same plane, it is acting in a different planes or so. 
So, force system as I told it is the coplanar and the, the non coplanar forces. In coplanar forces, we have further four classification collinear forces, concurrent forces, non concurrent forces, and parallel forces. So, let us see which are those and the coplanar, non coplanar forces also have three uh, typical classification. It does not have the collinear, but it has a concurrent, non concurrent, and the parallel forces also. So, the coplanar forces are that. Uh, the line of action, see all those uh, the classification and the further classifications are based on the, the, the characteristics of the forces. So, line of action of the entire force system is in same direction. Example, example is a in the tug of fire, when uh, two groups of people are uh, uh, in a, uh, that point, uh, pulling a particular rope. So, two forces are created which are in a same plane and in same direction or may be opposite direction whatever, but in a same line of actions also. Now, next is the concurrent forces. When the line of action of the forces passes through a single point, it now may not be in the, uh, the collinear, it is not in the same line of action. Line of action may change, but it must go through a same point. So, the Example, if you take a truss, a bridge truss or so, and if you see this particular three members of a truss, central member, triangular members, and these three forces are not collinear, because their action, line of action is not same, different three different directions, but they are passing through a single point. The single point is this point, single point is this point, this point is a single point. So, uh, this is called the collinear forces or so. So, uh, the next one is the coplanar forces. Coplanar forces are uh, uh, the uh, no sorry, no, coplanar forces in the non concurrent kind of forces when the line of actions are not passing through the same single point. If you if again you take the, the same uh, the example of a truss and now take three uh, different members. So, one member is this, the line of action is this. Another member is this, the line of action is this, and the third member is this, suppose the line of action is this. So, uh, they are not going to uh, meet anywhere, these two are parallel, these two are parallel, this there is a meeting point, this is another meeting point, but these three are not meeting with each other. So, this is they are called the, uh, the coplanar forces, coplanar forces non concurrent type. The last one, last one is called the parallel forces. Uh, parallel forces are uh, definitely it is a non concurrent, but uh, it is it is something like uh, goes parallel to each other. So, suppose you take a railway coach uh, a engine and there are wheels and the, all the load of that particular engine or maybe any coach passes through the wheel. So, those wheels uh, are actually grounded some force, some weight and those are the parallel force. See, it is parallel, it is definitely give you because it is the, the wheel is a circular one and it is touching with the rail with a particular point. So, it keeps the uh, or the transmit the load through the radius, the perpendicular radius or so. So, again let us uh, go to that uh, chart, flow chart, the, those the coplanar and non coplanar and then the collinear and the uh, concurrent, non concurrent parallel. And in the non uh, coplanar forces, again we have concurrent, uh, non concurrent, and the parallel. Let us discuss those three also. Now, let us, uh, 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 let us uh, understand that now I am going to discuss the non coplanar. So, they are not in a same plane, but they are not in a same plane, but they are concurrent, they, they are line of action passing through the single point. So, suppose a table which is having the or maybe a tripod. Uh, having the three legs uh, meeting in a same point here, meeting in a same point, but these three forces are definitely not in a same plane. Uh, the, so, it is concurrent, but a non uh, coplanar kind of a force. So, next is the non concurrent force. So, now let us take a particular tree, the branches of the tree, non coplanar all the forces if you now next see, see this is the one branch. 
So, from all the branch there are various type of forces in different locations depending upon the branches or so, those are definitely not in a same plane and also they are not going to uh, through a uh, same line of action, see there are different line of actions like this. So, they are not at all uh, going through different uh, the same uh, point of uh, the line of actions or so. So, this is a non-coplanar, non-concurrent kind of a force system. Finally, a parallel system, force systems also. It is parallel, but non-coplanar. So, that the, again the same example of that particular uh, table, where there are four legs and the forces are parallel, but non, not in a same plane also. Now, next one is the what is the, the impact of the force, uh, force and its impact. Uh, the force as you understand, it is the most active active uh, the element of a structure has to react. Force is the, the, the you may say it is like a cell of a human body and uh, like uh, you can ana analogize that to a particular structural system. So, if any structural system has to encounter a force, so uh, some amount of kilo Newton force whatever may be uh, way, uh, it is the most active and the elementary system source. So, force has some acting plane and the line of impact that what if whatever we have discussed. But depending upon this small action of a force and how it is actually applying on a particular structural member, we can have some product. What are the product? The first product is a moment. Suppose a force is applied uh, here at this particular point of action and there is a hinge or there is a pin support. So, definitely by virtue of this kind of a force, this particular uh, the, the, the member will going to rotate, this particular member is going to rotate. So, this a particular moment will going to create uh, depending upon the force and a distance from a particular given point or so or for, from a hinge. So, if you see in this particular figure, this is the hinge point and this is the action of a load force, suppose any force. And due to this force, this, see, the, 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 this force and as this force is uh, having a kind of a clear distance d from this particular hinge, the association of this three creates a moment. Association of this three, so let, let me make it d association of this three will create a moment, but the, the, the most active one or element is force. I have, no, I have not used anything other than a force, but there are some distance separation, some kind of a support conditions, uh, those are of course there. <coughs> now, let us see some other uh, examples also. There may be a couple, there may be a couple but let us imagine this is a, again a same particular uh, object having the hinge at the center, not at the end, at the center. And now if I push provide two such load, it will going to translate, it is just going to translate if this force and is equal to this force, this two force again having some distance, but I have shifted this particular uh, uh, the hinge at center, not at the end. It will create a different type of uh, transformation, transformation that is a sliding or maybe a translation. So, this is a translation, this is a rotation, but here in the next what I did is that same the hinge remain as here the same distance of separation, but this is a force downward direction, this is a force upward direction. So, it is minus f or minus f or plus f. So, if I put a kind of a hinge and one force like that and another force like that, again it will going to rotate. So, it will going to again it is going to rotate. So, depending upon the force, action of the force both in the same direction parallel, both are equal in uh, opposite 
something like that, I can have different type of rotate, uh, different type of uh, changes, rotation, translation, again rotation, something like that. This is called couple. This is called couple. So those moments and the couples will come into the picture, in the in the kind of the in the uh, particular typical type of the force systems also. So basis of that, as I discussed, that you may have some kind of de uh, depending upon the moment and the couple suppose you have a kind of a moment so there is a kind of a uh, 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 the some kind of a bending will going to occur sometimes there may be a compression some so that means if there is a uh, post and if this is the action of the forces definitely it will give you a compression the it will going to shorten it will going to shorten suppose if the same post is come under some kind of a force like this, action of the force is like this, it will going to elongate, it will going to elongate like that. Then there may be a moment here and some moment here, so it will going to bend like this. Okay. Then the shear torsion also will going to come in practice and whenever there are different type of forces are applicable to that. So, that uh, the, the discussion on the force and the impact will end this particular lecture today or the second lecture today and this uh, in this lecture I have taken the reference of these three books, the initial some of the chapters of these three books. The, in the conclusion I must say that the mechanics is a subject and its uh, relation with the structural engineering is discussed thoroughly. Uh, if you remember we have the statics, we have the dynamics and all that we have discussed in thoroughly. And we also discussed the f uh, and stated that the force is playing a major role in the structural system, which is elementary thing in a particular structural systems come into the play. And then you can get the modified version of the uh, the moment or couple or their uh, bending and all those uh, compression, all those things. The system of forces is discussed also with related to its impact in the structural. So this is the end of the lecture number two, and this is the uh, in the next we will going to discuss the, the, the moment couples and static equilibrium in the third lecture. Thank you very much.